everybody. Welcome to another edition of Math with Mr. Stevens. Uh, today we're going to continue in Module 4. We are going to be in Lesson 25 today, taking our first look at systems of equations. Me personally, I love systems of equations. I think they're fun. I think they're cool. And we are going to be using the strategy of graphing to solve these sets of equations. And we're going to see exactly what they look like and exactly kind of what we're looking for to get as a solution for these types of problems. So we're going to be on page 308. We're going to jump ahead. Come on. 308. Okay. There are there are three main ways for us to solve a system of equations. The first one is through graphing, and graphing is the one that we are going to focus on in this lesson and focus on in this video. Graphing is a fairly straightforward way of figuring out what your system of equations solution actually is, um, and it does give you your kind of best representation of how and why we give the solution for a system of equations the way we do. So, you are going to want to have a straight edge. I have a ruler here, and so I will use that because we are going to be drawing lines on coordinate planes, and drawing a line is so much easier when you have something that will keep your line actually straight. So we're going to take a look at question number two. We've got two equations. We've got x plus y equals negative two, and then we've got y equals four x plus three. So we have in this system of equations, we've got a, an equation in standard form and an equation in slope-intercept form. Okay. The slope-intercept form is going to be no problem for us to graph. We know how to graph slope-intercept form. Very easy, very straightforward. We're not going to worry about that quite yet. What we do need to do is take our standard form equation, y, um, x plus y equals negative 2, and put that into slope-intercept form so we can graph it a little bit more easily. Luckily for us, this equation is super easy to do. Our y is positive, and it does not have a coefficient. So all we have to do is we have to move that x away from our y variable by using subtraction. So we're going to subtract x from both sides of this equation. And so our new equation is now going to be positive y is equal to negative x minus 2. So same equation, just in a different form. So now both of our equations are in slope-intercept form. We can graph them pretty easily. We're going to start with the one that we transformed. Our first point is going to go at 0, negative 2 from our y-intercept. And then our slope is negative x, or rather, in this particular case, it's going to be negative 1. Our slope is going to be negative 1. So to go from point to point with the slope of negative 1, we can go down 1 to the right one, or we can go up 1 to the left one. In fact, we're going to do both. Down 1 to the right one for one point, and then up 1 to the left one for another point. So we've got three different points here. We are going to connect them and then extend them as well. So using your straight edge, draw a line through those points on your coordinate plane. Okay, that's it. That's one line. Now we have to do the other line. Y equals 4x plus 3. So again, same thing. We're going to go up 1, 2, 3. There's our first point. And our slope this time is 4. So that means we go up 4 and to the right one. Go up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right one. And we can also look at going at down 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the left one. Oh, look at that. It goes through that point right there that we just put on. So now when we have this line here, we're going to extend our lines, extend our, our points to connect. And so really what we're looking for here, after we have both of these lines graphed on a coordinate plane, we're looking for the one place that our line, lines meet, the one place where our lines intersect. That point is right here. And so when we go to answer, and we name the ordered pair where the line graphs, that is our answer. So our ordered pair is at negative one, negative one. This is our solution to this equation, to the system of equations, rather. A solution to a system of equations is given as an ordered pair. The reason is because it's describing this point. It tells us the location of this point because when we graph both of these lines, this is exactly where they're going to meet. This is exactly where they're going to intersect. So even when we use a different strategy, and we will use a different strategy in the future of solving a, systems of equation, a system of equations through either elimination or substitution, 
we're still going to represent our solution as an ordered pair because that's what it is. That's what it's describing. That's what our solution is, where these two lines meet. Now, for B and C, they are simply just asking for you to take those values for X and Y that you have in your ordered pair and then plug them into your equation to prove that they are indeed true for both equations. In order for a system of equations to be true and to have an actual solution, both values for x and y that you have found at your point need to be able to be plugged back into your equation and make them both to be true statements. So we're going to do that real quick. x plus y, so that's going to be negative 1 plus negative 1 is equal to negative 2. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is indeed negative 2, and negative 2 does indeed equal negative 2. So it works for that equation, no problem. This equation up here, 4x plus 3. So we're going to plug negative 1 in for y times 4 times negative 1 plus 3. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3, that's going to give us negative 1, and negative 1 is indeed equal to negative 1. Okay. Now, point D essentially asks you, could another point on this line be true? Negative 4, positive 2. Okay, negative 4, positive 2 is up here. Okay, they're essentially asking, could this point be a solution to this system of equations? And the answer is, of course, no. Because a system of equation, if they meet at all, if the lines do intersect at any point, it's only going to happen one time. So we can't have a solution here and a solution here it wouldn't be a line. A line will only cross through one place and that line will also cross through one single spot. So there's only one potential solution for two different lines. Okay? So our answer is of course no. We cannot. Okay? So this is essentially the process. We take our equations that are given to us either in standard form or slope intercept form. Me personally, I always put equations back into slope intercept form. And then I graph my equations. So I'm going to do the same thing for question number three. Same deal. We've got 3x plus y equals negative 3. And we've got negative 2x plus y equals 2. Both of these, very, very easy for me to put them into slope-intercept form. All I have to do is subtract the x coefficient from each side to move them. So I'm going to subtract 3x from this side and this side. And then I'm going to add 2x to this side and 2x to this side. So now my equations, because I have positive y values and I don't have any coefficients for y, makes it easy. I now have y being equal to negative 3x minus 3, and I have y being equal to positive 2x plus 2. Great. Easy. Now I need to graph these on this coordinate plane. My first point for negative 3x minus 3 is, of course, going to be at negative 3 because it says negative 3, so that means on my y-axis I go to negative 3. Negative 3x, so I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 1 to the right, and I'm going to go the opposite direction as well, up 1, 2, 3, 1 to the left. So I've got my three points. Take a straight edge and extend your line. Same thing here y equals 2x plus 2, I'm going to go up to 2, there's going to be my first point. And my slope is 2x, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 1 to the right. And then I'm going to do the same thing going down, 1, 2, 1 to the left. Okay? A positive slope, you can go 2 positive movements or you can go 2 negative movements. So up and to the right or you can go down and to the left. Those are your two options. You always have two directions, two possible options you can use for your slope. It doesn't matter which one, going in one direction from one point and then the opposite for the other point is usually a helpful strategy, mostly because we see, well, these two point, these two lines share the exact same point, and so as a result, we have a very clear intersection. Where is that intersection? It's at one zero. That's it. So now the rest of it is going to ask you to plug in. 1 for x, 0 for y to both of those equations. Guess what? You're going to be correct because we, I know that we graphed these lines correctly. And assuming you graphed them the same way I did, then you graph those lines correctly. And so we can very clearly see that our intersection is at 1, 0, and that our solution for this 
set of, or for this system of equations, is also one zero. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we got to do. We're just graphing. Hope you followed along with me. Hopefully that made sense. If, you, if it did not, send me an email. Take a look at some of the other problems on 310 and 311. Use those for practice. So that way you'll be able to answer your exit ticket. Adios.